People come from all over the world just to see the snake dance here. A lot of children are a little more willing to hold the snakes and to interact with them. Sometimes the adults are a little more apprehensive, which I think is kind of odd, that it's almost like the fear of snakes has been built into people as they grow up. I do not like snakes because they're a little unpredictable. And, um, uh, yeah, they're, yeah, I, I, I'm doing a terrible job pretending that I like snakes. <laughs> Here in the inner lake of Manitoba, Canada, is by far the largest uh, aggregations or concentrations of snakes anywhere in the world. The inner lake of Manitoba is so plentiful, or why snakes are so plentiful here, really goes back to the geology of the area. Temperatures can reach 50 degrees below zero. And so a snake, being a cold-blooded animal, they have to be able to survive those winter temperatures. So that here in the inner lake region, the limestone bedrock is very close to the surface. And so that allows the cold and the water to crack and fissure the limestone. And it makes great big sinkholes. And that enables the snakes to get below the frost line during the winter. There's a very limited number of these den sites. So all the snakes in an area have to go to that den site that's, that's in their region. And so that's how you end up with literally tens of thousands of snakes being in a sinkhole that might be the size of the average person's living room. It is actually very difficult for the males to find a female because if you look from a snake's eye view, you just see kind of a sea of living spaghetti and you're looking for a slightly bigger piece of spaghetti than, than all the rest of them. They'll detect the female sex pheromone. The males are very easily able to then go past all the other pieces of spaghetti, if you will, and home in on the female. Oftentimes when the group of these courting males all gathered around one female trying to be that lucky guy that's going to mate with her, they'll get so wrapped up they can tumble down a hill literally like a ball, so people call them mating balls. Even though there's tremendous competition for mates, the males are not fighting with each other, they don't have dominance hierarchies, they don't have territories set up like other animals would do in a similar situation. I like to call them the ambassadors of the reptile world. They're a great way for people to interact with wildlife. Look at mommy and smile. The garter snakes don't have teeth and they really, they feel cool when you touch them and stuff. So they don't, they, don't, they don't bite you, they just kind of move around in your hand really fast and stuff. Awesome job, guys. Obviously all the snakes here are harmless. The dens here at Narciss have been set up through Manitoba Conservation and uh, the boardwalks have been made and they're, they're regulated. So it's a nice place for people to come visit with minimal impact on the denning sites themselves. Way back at the turn of the century and even through the 20s, 30s, and 40s, people had a pretty bad attitude about snakes and trying to clear them out. Just times have changed a lot. I think people are much more environmentally conscious. Really and truly, having these healthy numbers of snakes means you're living in a healthy environment.